Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you about basically the quantum energy generator, what I'm coming up with, essentially version two, as you can see it here. This is a result of about a, oh, I'd say a week works here. And it's thanks, of course, to all of your support that uh, got me some parts here, some magnetic wires and uh, some 80 volt spark gaps. I wouldn't have been able to do these experiments without your support, so I very appreciate it, folks. So um, with that said, if you haven't watched my earlier videos, um, there's a lot going on here. And um, to start, um, to what angle, you know, how I got here basically. And I just want to show you some of these books that have been, that I think is a must for everyone who's into this stuff here. And I'll go through a few here. And um, basically there's this one here, which is The Fantastic Inventions of Nikola Tesla. And it's jam-packed with basically all the patents and an explanation. So very um, interesting if you're into the Tesla stuff. And um, I notice here, you know, in relative to my quantum energy generator version one, I'm looking at a patent book here, which is uh, System of Electrical Distribution, Patent May 1, uh, 1888. Of course, as you go later in the book, you see it's relative to a motor, but the coiling system here specifically is very similar to my quantum energy generator version one as far as the coiling and the magnetics are concerned. So what I'm getting at is Tesla probably did it first, folks, in his own ways. So it always boils down to um, going back down to the primitive and the work of Tesla and if you haven't read this, a lot of information in relative to what we're doing here. Another one that's really good, which is more applicable to here, is his experiments with alternative currents of high potential and high frequency here. This is what he was experimenting with, but was partially cryptic with the information. So this book pretty well gives you all of his research here. And a few things that fascinate me in this book, for example, is the way they describe, I don't know if you're going to see it here, his one wire system here. And um, this is essentially a form of what I'm doing here, but I gave it a twist of using ion valves instead of he's using a, a rotating plate near the core here, which spins. I wasn't interested in that, but essentially you see the high freak, it's the one wire system and everything is an open loop essentially. So um, at high frequency, high voltage, of course. So another hint, and this book pretty well explains all the details on, you know, a good half of what is happening here anyways. And of course for the other part of it, um, especially dealing with the high voltage potentials, the electrostatic fields, folks, there's a lot more there than what traditional science wants us to believe. And Tom Bearden is right when he explains it. It's a dynamic, steady state, essentially. And he has the waterfall um, visual where, you know, from far away, it's static, right? It's a waterfall. It doesn't really seem like it's moving. But as you get closer, oh my goodness, there's a lot of swooshing energy here, and this way of saying it is put a wheel under there and get the energy. So electrostatic is very uh, ferocious, actually. And with that said, here's another book here, which is called Homemade Lightning. And it's all the different electros. I've got some research papers here. Okay, so um, basically it tells us everything we need to know about the electrostatics. And this helped me a lot understand, you know, how the Leyden jars and the capacitors and open air at high voltage, simply with these electrostatic fields, can induce these various charges just out of potential differences in the various devices. And so this was very interesting for, you know, taking basically ideas for the ion valve. So jam packed if you're into electrostatic very interesting so now um, back to this I'll explain what this is all about here um, I was experimenting with the quantum energy generator version one I notice all this 
whooshing at high frequency, high voltage energy around the core, but I couldn't really isolate it right, couldn't uh, control it right. So um, I started experimenting over here with what I call, it's not something I made up, but it's called the iron valve, right? So it's a hollow tube with a rod in the middle. I just used a piece of wood and wrapped it up with foil tape and here's my the cathode and anode setup essentially in the open air. And when I experimenting with this, I realized, oh my goodness, I was having no more problems with the isolation issues and the high voltage zapping me and the capacitors were charging perfect. So I also realized a little later on, I also made another video where we have the Tesla coil secondary here up there which just having it near and next to the ion valve both of them was triggering that's why I call it two cap dumps at once so that got me thinking folks and I figured you know what if I build a hybrid of this ion valve action and the, basically here I use soda can a soda bottles plastic bottles and I wrap the magnetic wire here and basically build Tesla coil secondaries that with the rod here all going in the middle so I have one to four of them in total so these are all see open loop systems here every one of these is open and on one side here's the rectifier setup half wave which converts the one wire from the potential difference and the ion action because what happens here this is kind of like a hybrid you see where the air in and around here could ionize and this interacts with it as an ion valve plus there's the high voltage high frequency action which energizes the coil changes helps with the potential the capacitors here kind of create a pressure valve and then 80 volt spark gap dumps individually all back into the battery here so um, essentially we are doing the one wire system okay so um, this is just a little high voltage high frequency oscillator about 100 milliamps 12 volts I'm using it as a dummy of a Tesla coil so if you'd really want serious energy here folks you want to introduce a traditional Tesla coil here which has the spark gap and the magnitudes of high frequency high voltage oscillations and instead of having that top cap this core here would be your setup but for experimentation and just for prototyping I used you know this emulator simulator version of a Tesla coil to observe the high voltage high frequency effect much more controlled but in essence you know much more damn version but it allows me to interact with the system the same way and observe and needless to say each device here is completely isolated from the other they're all one wire systems tapping their own potentials of energy differences changing that in the capacitor which translates it so essentially and you have to see what's very interesting with this system folks is there's no um, CEMF you see because we don't have a closed loop system or have the energy on itself is coming back into the system like in a traditional this is completely different now and they're all isolated so in Tom Bearden terms there's no um, symmetrical regaging going on here with all of this of course I'm not talking about the exciter that takes its 100 milliamps or whatever your Tesla coil I'm talking about what runs from that point on everyone has the idea of closing the loop or partially closing it we're literally taking the one wire system literal all the way around the core and every coil around is all one wire open loop the whole way through they're all separate so um, by doing that, it allows us to also introduce what Tom Bearden talks about, the asymmetrical regaging. Without having to worry about the symmetrical regaging, basically the CEMF of the system. So every cap dump now is an extra energy system going back into the battery now. And what's interesting with this, folks, is there doesn't seem to be a limit from my experimentations, two, three, four, five you're limited by your resources and the room you've got and the more of these 
the more amperage will get back into your battery without stressing your, your input load because this is not like um, see this device here for example could take 1.5 amps when you're actually stressing it shorting it out with a spark gap loading it down rectifying it it'll give you about 1.5 amps but it runs hot after a few moments and that's the whole point we don't want to do that so letting it run as a free running oscillator as, as it's supposed to without loading it down it stays running cool and it doesn't matter how much because you're not actually loading it down because of course in part there's the high frequency again if you want to know more this explains it all here and as far as more of the uh, what the high voltage does feels statically this one here answers all those questions folks so um yeah with that said um, i'm sure you can read between the lines uh add more of these coils widen the core and you get more so i will show you right now i will turn it on and show you how all these four systems individually cab dump and this is 80 volts being dumped into the battery every time you hear the pulse at 22 uf so it's moving that battery folks all right, so I will show you that now. All right, so here we have it. I will slowly, without zapping myself here, turn this on. And I will show you all my caps. Or all, you'll see them flash. That's one of them. There's another one here. That's flashing. So they're all flashing, folks. Then you can hear them. I could hear them anyways, clicking along. See, there's another one flashing. So these are all dumping into the battery right now. So this is all working perfect. 22 UF, 80 volts. Every second there's a dump times 4. You can hear it click, 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 click. And it's clicking inside the battery as well. So I hope you enjoy, folks. And I'm always learning something myself. And I hope this information is useful to you. And um, I think Tom Bearden meant it literal what he said. One wire. Keep the loop open. All the way through. Every transformer. And this uh, spark gap system here allows us to do the asymmetrical regaging hitting the battery at 80 volts. And every single one of these don't stress the input load, just like we want it. <laughs>